Hey, what's going on friends, family? My name is Skylint, and often I do a lot of rant videos or top 10s talking about MMOs. More often than not, it's rather toxic, it's rather negative, really focusing on why I don't play them or why the genre is falling apart, and this isn't unique to me, even though I am more of a teethier sort of critic, uh, all of the MMO YouTubers, pretty much uh, streamers, have a lot to say about the entire genre or specific games that are up and coming or they would be if they weren't failing and flailing and yeah. Anyways, the MMO genre is a little awkward, but in spite of that, I'm trying to keep the hype alive. And I wanted to do a video that shines some light on reasons why I personally would pick up an MMO. So I picked out 10. By picking out, I mean I literally just scribbled these out and I'm just going to read out the bullet points. They're not really ordered too well, but the first five are going to be more vague sort of, uh, I guess, publishing aspects or just overall generalizations of the MMO uh, sort of gameplay loop. And then the latter five are going to be more specific uh, mechanics actually inside the game that are more tasteful for my, well, personal taste, my biases. And I think they're generally more healthy and unique to the MMO genre. So with that in mind, I'm just going to say some stuff and things, and hopefully uh, you guys have some fun. Okay, so the first reason why I, I get excited to pick up a game, a new MMO, is if it's actually an MMO. You know, so often we have games uh, like Destiny or Monster Hunter, or even back in the day, we have Guild Wars 1, A World of Tanks. Games that are really mislabeled as MMOs, they're not truly massive. They might be online RPGs, some of them aren't even RPGs, but whatever. And some of them even start to kind of blend the rules a little bit, and I call those MMO lights. With those persistent open servers, even though they're not massive, they are pretty unique. Uh, so, you know, you can call them like MMO lights, sure, why not? But true MMOs, those are hard to come by, and the ones that do actually release that are technically MMOs, uh, a lot of them don't feel that way. So a game that really focuses on actual MMO mechanics, which I'm going to talk about, you know, later on in this video, those are the ones that uh, really excites me. So yeah, the fact that it is it is really an MMO, not just a four player dungeon diver and actually has, you know, all that cool open world content with a massive number of players. Yep. Yep. That's that's a pretty cool thing. That's a good reason to pick up an MMO. And next point is actually talking about that massivity. Some people don't believe that population or popularity matters. It entirely does inside of an MMO. So another reason why I would pick up an MMO is going to be talking about the hype launches. Some people disconnect the development of a game with the publishing of a game, but when it comes to online and especially games as a service, they're exactly the same. When you come up with new expansions, new updates, and especially seasonal events, when you create these new hype launches, such as classic World of Warcraft or old school RuneScape going to mobile, those sort of surges in player counts completely change how people actually play the game, how you make content on the game, and all that meta stuff is really the true magic of what an MMO is. So yeah, jumping on the tidal wave of, of a hype launch is totally a reason. You know, like getting behind the trend is absolutely an aspect of gameplay when it comes to MMOs. Next up, number eight, I guess, is accessible but challenging. I have for the bullet points. And I, to elaborate, basically, I, I really just mean a game like, uh, man, I played some game, it canceled, it's called Perpetuum. And I think EVE Online to an extent is, uh, you know, like this. And a lot of really niche games like Darkfall, etc., Mortal Online, uh, especially just mostly sandbox games. A lot of these games are so inaccessible. Uh, but they're really challenging, which is really cool. So, you know, if you put in the time and effort, you might be rewarded, generally not. Uh, but yeah, I want a game that is accessible, such as a lot of eSport games, where it's like, yeah, you can get in and have fun and, and pick it up, but you can obviously see that later on there's a high skill ceiling. I want that in an MMO, and I think most people want that in most games, but MMO is divisive. It's polarizing, because a lot of people play it for completely casual reasons, even hardcore MMOs. Um, like, you could debate with Black Desert Online. It's extremely casual, but it's also extremely hardcore. Uh, but that's like the worst of both worlds. I want it to be something more akin to like World of Warcraft, vanilla, classic, or old school RuneScape, where the game can really n punch you in the face. Okay, you can be missing some teeth. Uh, but at the same time, it's actually not that hard if you take your time, the mechanics come at you one at a time, you can learn it, and yet you can also challenge yourself. The game does challenge you, and you can go even further beyond and challenge the game even further with efficiency, speedrunning, Iron Man modes, and things like that. Next up, let's talk about a trustworthy publisher. Now, I already talked about how the publishing is pretty much, you know, it's, it's the other side of the coin of development, but I need that development to be consistent. I need to have trust and faith that the game will continue to at least exist 
uh, to actually have expansions and updates. It's a games as a service, okay? I want to be serviced. Please service me. And with the polish that and respect that I deserve as a paying customer, as a playing customer, as uh, somebody who is literally the content of this game. The players are the content. So I'm going to need, um, you know, people like Blizzard. It's a little rocky. It's a little shaky. Jagex is generally very, very good with old school RuneScape. Uh, but a lot of these Eastern publishers, you know, it's a little it's a little scary. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like, where is it going to go? I don't know. So if if I am not confident in a publisher, that they're gonna at least make content if they're going to create really good well well produced content then um you know i i i don't know if i'm gonna pick up that mmo but if it's a, if it's a company that has made you know a good mmo in the past or you know is releasing a like again like classic world of warcraft blizzard right uh with modern wow it's awkward but they've consistently pushed out some really good content some bad content but consistent nonetheless same thing with runescape um you know a lot of these companies they go in directions that maybe we don't like but as long as they keep producing content and it's generally fair and just and generally polished, then okay, that's good enough for me. Just 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 have a little bit of, you know, trustworthiness to yourselves, which, um, you know, you, you would think there would be a little bit more of in games as a service. But man, do do a lot of these companies love to just cash grab, especially these Asian ones. OK, now. Uh, another thing uh, to talk about is is, is basically cheapness, um, and I I know that some people are it's a divisive conversation debate to have, but basically I wish every MMO was free to play because I think the more players the better. Though you could totally argue, uh, you know, botting and um, you know the type of people that get in these games, uh, and sometimes uh, games aren't really designed to, to be super overly populated, so. Hey, that's awkward in things, I know, but basically, I really like it when games are cheap, when they're really fairly priced. I don't like retail World of Warcraft because you have to buy the boxes, you have to pay the subscription, and they still have a cash shop with mounts that are like $30, $40. No, uh, Guild Wars 2 also kind of double dips, though um, ESO is really expensive, but I do like the fact that there's choices, so you can choose to subscribe, or you can choose to get the expansions, or you can choose individual DLCs, that's pretty neat. Um, overall, I I do I actually will pick up an MMO and I do play an MMO based on how um, accessible it is in terms of monetization and fairness. OK, that is, you know, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that. But as soon as I feel that something is unfair, um, especially with a lot of Eastern games, mm, you know what? I just stop caring. And the moment I sniff that at all, I nope, I'm out. All right, so. We're in the last half of the video. These are going to be more specific mechanics, uh, probably more the reason why you actually came to this video. So I'm going to go ahead and serve it up to you. I want I want my role play in my RPG, guys. I like, uh, you know, I, I like talent trees and, and things like that, but often they're oversimplified. And, you know, I'm, I'm not somebody who just jerks off on games like Path of Exile. That's, you know, maybe that's a bit much, but it's really freaking cool, right? Um, I just really want to have customization i really want to be able to play my role i want to have an interesting macro play style uh you know that i, I can kind of you know build build around and, and kind of fit a unique niche within a raid or whatever and have it be viable um or even unviable actually i i really wish that more games would allow us to branch out and do things that are unexpected uh, you know, you, you can't, I guess kind of like how a lot of older MMOs were designed, a lot of things were totally unviable, totally awkward and strange, um, and we could actually branch out and do that and then make it work in some way because, you know, player expression, player creativity, uh, that, that just kind of goes together in roleplay games. So, um, you know, even if technically it's hard to gamify it, even if technically it's hard to be meta, um, you know, it's just really cool to have those options in my roleplaying game because that's... It's kind of what makes an RPG an RPG, in a way. Whether it's good or bad in most situations or less situations, I don't care, man. I have a fantasy that I want to live out. Let's do it. Okay, next up for a specific mechanic that I really, really love, that I think MMOs do most uniquely and best, um, for the most part, is open world PvEVP. Uh, now, I do love MOBAs, like League of Legends. I play a jungler, if that says anything, for PvEVP. I also really enjoyed Albion as a solo ganker and farmer, uh, silver, uh, what they call it, inside of that game as well. Basically, it's like a jungler in an MMO. Um, in World of Warcraft, I kind of enjoy the, the same aspect. I love questing and questing around, and I love that the two factions, their questing zones can actually intersect, and, uh, you know, there's fighting and you get rewards from it. That's super cool. I appreciate it. Uh, open world PvP uh, is fun, but I like the PvEVP. 
that is kind of a unique special take that uh, a few genres such as MOBA are kind of, um, you know, they're pushing that. But MMOs, I think, can do it really, really fantastic. And I'm just really sad that a lot more don't. A lot more don't have questing in their PvP zones where the PvP is just arena based or 1v1, duel based. And yeah, I love dueling, you know, I can, you can put that on the list. So if a game has dueling, holy crap, I'll play an MMO for that. I played World of Warcraft and Albion Online for that. And, um, you know, but, but just arenas like Blade and Soul or Guild Wars 2, that just doesn't do it for me. That's not as special as an MMO. It just, um, you know, those battlegrounds, um, that's also really fun too. But open world PvE, VP, you know, you, you guys are fighting, contesting over world bosses and, and, and rare mob spawns and things like that. That is a unique situation that I really appreciate. All right, coming up, uh, we're at the last three here. I want to talk about unique micro, like micro mechanics inside the class designs. So I already talked about the macro role play, you know, being able to kind of customize uh, my class to an extent. Uh, I just want to live a, a fantasy, so it doesn't need to be ridiculous customization like we see in Albion or Path of Exile. Though I keep saying Path of Exile, Path of Exile is not an MMO. Anyways, um, but what I'm also talking about is unique uh, mechanics, such as I think the mage in World of Warcraft has some really cool uh, skill shots and blinking, and it's just really iconic. And the way you play mage, at least in PvP, is rather unique and special. Uh, also, I think, you know, in, in terms of macro scale, Warlock is also very unique. Uh, but in terms of micro mechanics, a lot of the spellcasters inside of World of Warcraft really have, you know, kind of like you just sim similar rotations, similar standstilly combat. Uh, you know, and, and so that, that's kind of awkward. Um, so it's really cool whenever I look at an MMO, I do want to see unique uh, combinations of like, you know, I guess Shaman actually, Shaman leveling inside of World of Warcraft, I'm playing a lot of classic, wow, okay, you can tell, um, is actually really unique because you're kiting around your slowing totem. Um, same thing with the mage, with the kiting, also very unique. Um, Rogue, actually, how you, the way you backstab um, by standing on top of mobs or you stun them, run behind them. Uh, with directionals uh, also had fun with Albion with directionals with the spear class so there's some there's some really cool stuff that you can do in terms of micro mechanics with some classes in some games and I like it when an MMO understands that you know it's not just tab targeting it's not just point and click um, even though actually some point and click games such as MOBAs actually have tons of mechanics in that and actually RuneScape is ridiculous but regardless um, I really like when there's a unique game feel and that's even comparison to sh other shooter games, other MOBAs, other other games. So even though an MMO is a totally different macro gameplay, I totally understand that. I still really look toward games, even like Darkfall, which is a totally failed game because it had unique micro arena shooter style mechanics um, that made it very, very different. Uh, actually, Black Desert Online also with its with its fighting game style combos and, and you know the the way that gameplay actually feels when you play it is very, very different. So I do appreciate that a lot. All right, number two on the list is professions and economic depth. Eco depth. Um, I know I, I just, I was talking about micro mechanics, right? And PVP and stuff like that. But actually, um, you know, I, I could play totally like, a, basically like a turn-based game, essentially. Uh, a lot of people play MMOs almost not even actually in-game or they're just looking at spreadsheets or they just log in to kind of uh, do some auctioning. Like actually the, the economy is, is so fun and the profession gameplay can be so engrossing, especially when you're working with a guild. Generally, yeah, no, 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 gen generally though, it, it's it's pretty mind-numbingly boring though in MMOs, even, even some that I'm about to use as examples, like Albion Online, how every player makes every item in the game basically and um, you know, you're producing all this and it's going into the economy and you actually have an impact. And that's cool in things, um, but even in that game, most of the time you're just kind of clicking on a tree and watching a bar fill up. So the more creativity that is in that um, versus just the weight of it is a lot better. Um, I think it would be really cool if a game had more creativity in terms of like players actually making unique items in the game or looting unique items in the game, uh, which uh, Survived By was gonna kind of do that, but not really anyways. There's a couple games, maybe like a dual universe that's going to have blueprint selling where you can sell blueprints of ships. That's really cool. So I just I really want that. I really want that creativity. I've actually done a whole video on that, but basically games that actually have weight to the professions right now playing through classic WoW or if you ever play RuneScape, um, you know that like the trading and uh, the economy game is actually pretty big. At least, um, you know, when you're first starting and, and things like that. So I really appreciate it. Actually, if you just look on RuneScape, there's tons of videos and guides on just playing with the economy. It's so cool. And I'm sure you guys know EVE Online and a couple others. 
titles. Um, so yeah, when there's weight, and especially when they put creativity on the grind and, and, and the monetization, that's that's really freaking cool. Monetization inside the game, not not like subscription fee and you know selling gold bonds and things like that. All right, guys, and finally my number one thing that uh, makes me pick up an MMO. Even though this list is is awkwardly organized, um, but yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm just gonna say this. I've, I've actually done maybe a couple rant videos talking around this subject, and one specifically about this. But basically, I'm just gonna say discoverability. You know, the, uh, some games could have some of these aspects uh, in this video or take away from it. it. Could just be PVE, could be PVP, it could be totally turn-based, or it could be totally action-based. There's a lot of things that I can, I'm fine with giving and taking depending on the game, because I appreciate MMOs for what they are. But to me, the, the really one of the biggest aspects to MMOs, aside from literally actually being an MMO, is discoverability. You know, not quite like having a compass, not not really just being thrown down a line like a giant tutorial. Um, I'm not saying it has to be sandbox, but I'm just it just needs to reward players with playing the game, actually looking past the UI, actually looking at the world, you know, talking with other players and learning about the little micro mechanics, learning the best way to play the economy, um, you know, really understanding what the, the lore could, could actually imply for the future, you know, like looking for little bits and pieces here and trying to understand and guess like what the new expansion might be, things like that, like all the little details that aren't just thrown in your face with a cinematic, that you're not just thrown, you know, quest, 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 um, but it's things that you you actually have the opportunity to discover or but also also you can just pass all that There's lots of different ways to play games We see people play runescape for the questing We see people play runescape just for the arcade Iron Man ish, you know gamification of the economy Um, same thing with World of Warcraft a lot of people are complaining about people speed running WoW, but that's actually been a part of the That's been a part of the culture since forever People think you can't speedrun MMOs, and it's literally an eSport right now. Like, at this moment, the Classic WoW launch is a freaking eSport. People are, you know, having, like, competitions, and there's entire, like, eSport teams being formed and streaming it. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, so, you know, I, I'm totally fine with that. It basically just give us the option. You know, give us that world. Give us that breadth of what only an MMO can really do. Of course, I mean, of course, you could play games like other sandbox RPGs. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of lying there. But MMOs have that unique flavor and taste of all the things that I talked about in this video already. So, yeah, just just give us that element of discoverability. Sure, I guess any open world sandbox RPG needs to have that. That is the main draw, absolutely. And MMOs do need that. Um, but I think they really need should focus on it much, much more than they already do because we have all these players working together. And the the point of working together is to discover together, to experience together. So if you don't have a focus on discoverability, then I, well, I don't, I don't know where really what the gameplay is going to be. It's going to be half-assed versus any other genre that I could probably play. So, you know, why would I do your arenas? Why would I do your dungeons? I could play Monster Hunter. I could, you know, I could go play a MOBA. Discoverability is really the magic of MMOs in my opinion. So yeah, when, it, when an MMO focuses on that and it makes it very apparent, uh, such as, you know, Guild Wars 2, actually. Um, its map design is very discoverable. Old, old school World of Warcraft, I loved it. Old school RuneScape, also very discoverable. I um, actually did a whole list video on, like, you know, most explorable MMOs. I really appreciate those games. Thank you very much. The big reason to pick up an MMO, in my opinion. So guys, um, I just said some words. I just listed a bullet point listed 10 things that I thought were important. Uh, five were rather vague and five were a little bit specific, kind of, uh, at least in terms of mechanics. Maybe, I don't know. I just threw some stuff down, but let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. This was a very ranty, rambly video that I just kind of passionately threw out to, you know, but uh, hopefully it was fun. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's the point of everything. It was, it was just having fun and hopefully now in the comments below, if you actually watch this video, I'm assuming that you, you really like MMOs and you appreciate the community that we built here. So if you could help us all out and list, I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite MMO or what has historically been your favorite MMO and put it down in the comments below. And I'm sure, you know, if somebody sees something listed out here, you know, and I'm sure you're going to tell us a story and why you like it, then, you know, maybe they can go and try it for themselves and we can all discover uh, that together with each other, you know, and, and rediscover and reshare and, you know, just constantly build the MMO community as a whole and hopefully get some subscribers along the way. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, <laughs> and all the good YouTube stuff. Thanks 
so much. Um, and if you guys want to actually support the Patreon, if you're a Patreon, you can go to the Discord and uh, actually mention a topic to me, and I'll try to talk about it in a rant video or an essay or something. That'd be pretty cool. So I got to say, guys, all I can ask is you keep the hype alive. My name's Skylint, and I'll see you again next time.